Hi, good evening, guys. Welcome back to the live checkup. I am JD, and that right there is Dr. Asante LeBlanc. Whether it's to my left or to my right, I don't know how it works, but she's there, right? So we are here to have another very important conversation inside your virtual world, and we thank you so much for choosing to jump onto the YouTube channel or other platforms that you may be viewing this right now. Thank you so much for your time. Now, if you notice, Dr. Asante LeBlanc is in a different location, so she is literally stealing some of her time to get this done for us today, all right? So even though it is live and we are answering your questions live, the doctor is in office, sorry, Victoria Clinic location, and she will answer all the questions as we go through it. All right, so good afternoon. Well, it's gonna be airing at 8 p.m. So good evening to you, Doc. How are you doing? I'm fine, JD. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I like the haircut. Turn to the salon, let me see. Yes, What's I you? went to the barber. I got oh, yeah. a hair from the Minister of Health. So I went to the barber. Actually, I, I did me. I know. It feels good, right? <laughs> I, I'm actually oh, I so good. going to my, um, what do you call those persons who do your eyebrows? I'm going to her in just a few minutes. So... <laughs> Yes, again, we know this is airing at 8 p.m. on Thursday, but we're recording this on Wednesday. Yeah, technology. But again, we're still here to answer your question. So, Dr. Asante LeBlanc, you know, one of the things I said to you last week, I said, Doc, we need to speak about insomnia. And so before we jump into that, because that is a very heavy talk, we had many persons are dealing with that particular um, issue. Can you quickly just give us, because I know your, your time is tight today, but can you quickly give us, again, a little bit of like, the history on what you do at Victoria Clinic? Because I know it's a holistic center and you've got di different things happening there. So someone who may be looking on for the first time would love to hear the information that you have to offer at, at that location. Yes, Jenny. Um, well, hi, everyone. I am Dr. Santi Van Lister at LeBlanc. I am the medical director of Victoria Clinic and owner. <laughs> um, Victoria Clinic yes. is your home for holistic health care in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, at Victoria Clinic, I practice um, integrative medicine. So I practice Western medicine and I combine Eastern medicine. Right. So what does this mean? It means that I bring together with Western medicine, I bring together traditional Chinese medicine. So I do a traditional Chinese medicine consultation and I implement acupuncture and herbs, or I can put the two together, integrating them and using Western medicine along with those, those modalities. Um, Victoria Clinic really is the, the, the aim and the goal of Victoria Clinic, the vision of Victoria Clinic is really so that our clients achieve optimum health um, as we guide them along that journey. So we're not dictators. Um, it's really a very... I want it always and aim for it to be a very calming place. Right. Um, I'm also a clinical dentatometrist, so I specialize in the management and, and treatment of osteoporosis and the diagnosis of, of osteoporosis. Um, we also have an in-house psychologist. We do blood testing. We do EKGs. We, um, we have, luckily, in-house, in we have sports rehab um, trainers as well as mas massage therapists, sports, sports massage therapists. Um, we have a health coach. Um, and really and truly, it's, it's where you come and we start to demystify, debunk the myths, break it down for you, really see what's happening and, and do our best and, and, you know, try and direct you along that way. And you do that such an easy way, you make it understandable and not, I don't want to say fun, but you make it very easy to take in the information that you offer. Yeah. So well, I try so my best. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> so again, you're looking at, uh, this is uh, us here on YouTube, but we will also have this on our various pages from Facebook as well. So you can check it out there too. All right. So let's jump into it. In, insomnia. I know too many people talking and complaining about this. This morning I was speaking to a friend who says she was up till 5 a.m. What is insomnia? I have lots of questions. Yeah? So I'm just going to just dish them out at so you today. I am going to give you the official definition of nice. insomnia. <laughs> um, insomnia is a sleep disorder in which you have trouble falling asleep and or staying asleep. The condition can be short term or acute and it can last a, or it can last a long term and be called chronic. It can come and go. So it can be constant or it may, you know, you may have bouts and episodes right. of it. Um, acute insomnia will last from one night to a few weeks, whereas chronic insomnia is when it happens at least three nights a week for three months or more. 
So, so I've given you the official definition of what is insomnia. Mm-hmm. So it's in chronic our language, and acute. I can't sleep. Yes. Yeah, I can't sleep. <laughs> so what are some of the systems, whether you're speaking about acute or even chronic? Mm-hmm. That's what are? Some of the symptoms, sorry. That, you know, oh, it's very simple. You just don't sleep. That's the, 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 the thing about insomnia is that you just don't sleep. <laughs> But I guess as you just, in fact, you no, you in fact you just broke it down because you said acute would be one or two days. So maybe that's the symptom for acute versus with the chronic. Well, it's a long yes, period so of I time. Mean, I guess, I guess if we look at it, and I, I, I guess I should not be that glib about it. Um, when you can't sleep, so let your body functions best when it gets at least five to eight hours rest, effective sleep, right? right. Um. When you can't fall asleep or you can't stay asleep, when you do fall asleep and you wake up or your sleep is very light and disturbed, then if we, your body doesn't get a chance to restore and to rebalance itself from the day of, of onslaught of, of the problems it's had. Right. So what happens is you wake up in the morning, you wake up tired, fatigued, your nervous system, so your brain is firing all through the night, so mm. it's not gotten rest. So when you wake up, you you then we can become more irritated, easily frustrated, memory problems, high blood pressure because you're not sleeping, um, very agitated. You can right. become violent. Um, so I guess those are instead of symptoms of insomnia, I would say those are the results or complications of insomnia. So that so when someone comes into our office, for example, they may not detect that they have insomnia because it's been going on for so many years so they may say why do i have high blood pressure and you go how are you sleeping they go oh but i i don't sleep and that's been like that for years but i manage and you're like okay so therein lies the problem you understand so that that is a big issue so that is not a big issue that is how we break it down and say well this may be a cause of insomnia and work it up and see how it's, you know, what else can be done. As, as you speak of causes, because I think about um, persons who may work that sort of shift system, you know, that may right. be one of the contributing factors to that. So if you can speak on other maybe environmental factors that contribute towards insomnia, that being one of them. So, for sure. so people like me, doctors, when we're graduate, when we're training our internships and our um, residencies, we definitely don't get sleep. Wow. So yeah. we, we work, I mean, um, when I was training in Cuba, in most of our rotations, we worked until midnight when we were on call. And then we slept from 12 to 4. One group slept from 12 to 4, and the other group slept from 4 to 8. And then if you were lucky, you went home at 8. But most times you went to work at 8, and you worked until 12 o'clock, midday, right? So you train your body to take you through. So we lived on coffee. And, 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 and such beautiful um, trees, right? So we, that group of engineers, night watchmen, guards, policemen, firemen, we're all on a shift system. So we train our body how to sleep. Yeah. But the, the, the trick is that we would then go home and you would think that we would take our eight hours then. But, when, yes. but you have things to do. Yes. And so you, you go to the grocery, you, <laughs> you clean your car, you have to go to the mechanic, you have to pay bills, you have children to look after if you're a single parent. So you don't always get that eight hours effective sleep. So it's not like you change your sleep clock. So it's before we get there, though, before we get there, JD, I, those are the shift workers. But causes of insomnia in people that are not shift workers include right. emotional health, mental health issues, right. anxiety, depression, stress. COVID alone is a classic example of what can cause acute insomnia, right? Because next question. <laughs> we at first March when it went down, we were like, okay, this is to save our lives. Yeah, we are good. We yeah. breathe, we enjoy outdoors, we did what we have to do, we just did it. But then when the months went on, you, you felt the stress. The cabin fever came on, and that itself could have led to insomnia. You look at the news, and you saw how many people were dying everywhere else, and that can affect your sleep because of your mental health. Then we have issues such as um, sometimes 
people wake up a lot with diabetes to urinate in the night, men with prostate issues, so that can cause insomnia as well. We have issues with um, just basic, um, I have a stressful situation, constant worrying, that can give you acute insomnia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can also have a state where um, it's your base, so Chinese medicine, when you read about it, you will see where you can be born with an inherent instability of your shen or spirit. And that is that you're inherently flighty and, and can't sleep and, and, and your body is not, is easily imbalanced. Mm. And, and so this is where you need to know your body and understand your body and don't just take it for granted. So I, I rarely like to hear people say, but it's always been that way. I always like to figure out can we somehow change it? Can we make a change? May not be the 180 degree change we want, but can we in initiate some kind of change in our bodies? So, you know, other causes include, I mean, let's think of insomnia, your brain chemistry, anything with your dopamine, um, the, the adrenaline rush, um, your serotonin receptors, those can all influence your sleep cycle, um, abuse, trauma, mm. violence. So all of it impacts on your mental state. So what is that telling us? That in order for you to get effective sleep, mentally you have to bring it down. You have to center. You have to calm. You, when you lie down, you can't watch a violent movie now and just drop off. Well, you can if you're me, right? Because I sleep on a rock. But, but, you know, um, and then, J.D., you know, women, menopause, you know, yeah. um, menopause can affect insomnia. Hormonal imbalances can, can cause insomnia. Um, so I should have said menopause can cause insomnia, not can affect insomnia. It affects your sleep cycle. Um, hormonal imbalances, your thyroid is major, major for um, hormones that can affect your sleep cycle. And, and, and um, so I'm just going through the list, JD. And, and when you think of it, um, sleep apnea due to chronic respiratory problems, right. obesity can cause sleep apnea, which causes insomnia because you don't get to sleep properly, which frazzles your central nervous system. So those are all causes of insomnia. That's a very long list of causes of insomnia from the environment to those mental issues that we may have. And I know people don't really like to hear the word mental and they instantly think insanity, but it's not about that. It's just simple things that you're dealing with. You know, that sort of old school pattern that we hear when you think mental, you're like, oh, we're not even talking about that. As you mentioned, many stresses, people are so stressed out and that, as you said, can be a cause of these, these medical conditions can be a cause of insomnia. And I laughed and I was showing the book because, you know, you always see, and I swear you didn't see it today, but well, she never sees it really, but yeah. Um, so you mentioned those different causes. Can you now speak on how, if we, if we are not getting the five to eight hours of sleep, what are some of the tips that we can possibly get? And I know REM sleep should be somehow talked about inside of this as well. Because I don't know if, if that, is it any way related to it? Why I say that? Because I remember in many conversations ago, you'd hear a person say they're sleeping, but they're not sleeping because they're so mentally stressed off. You know what I mean? And I don't know how long they spend inside of that REM sleep. So can you speak about that and also the tips that we need? <laughs> So REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep. So this is where you dream. It's a phase of the sleep cycle. And this is where you dream and your sleep is, is, um, it's, it's, it's the nicest sleep. It's the sleep right. you want to see. Um, so when you don't get enough REM sleep, um, <laughs> so REM sleep is, is um, the vital part of the sleep cycle. So it's when you, you dream. Um, it's when you you um, get a deeper sleep and your brain gets to recuperate and that's where your creativity comes in, your, your memory, all those things. That's when you get REM sleep. So it's very important to get REM sleep and not everybody gets REM sleep. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a big problem. So um, because I'm not a sleep physician, um, I, I, I did some research spots. for you. Sorry. Yes, you did, Sorry. but that's okay. Um, so we have awake, you're awake, you have light sleep, you have deep sleep, you have REM, and then you repeat. So that's how the sleep cycle goes. goes at, right? During the eight hours, so, I was supposed right, to. Right, right. So it will go and cycle and cycle and cycle. 
So if you go from light to awake or light repeat and you don't go REM, you don't go deep, then your body's not getting the proper sleep cycle. So it cannot function optimally. Okay. So what are some of the things that we need to do? Because I heard you speak about, well, I am going to use the term meditation, but you said something that led to me thinking about meditation. And that's one of the things that I most recently delved into. And certainly you can feel like you're meditating when you go sit in Dr. Asante's uh, lounge area. I'm telling you the calming music that you hear there, it sort of gives you that sort of atmosphere. So what are some of the tips or, or things that you think we need to do speaking to those persons who suffer from severe or even mild insomnia? Um, some of the tips, how do, we, how do we sleep better? So the first thing, J.D., is um, I'm laughing because you said in my office you hear slow music and meditative and calming. Mm-hmm. Since COVID, we've been playing oldies. Oh. And so we're rocking <laughs> to, to all sorts of oldies, including Johnny Cash, because I'm a big oh, country really? music fan. So, yeah. sorry. I know we you We changed are. up the script a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> so what can we do? Um, you can train your body. It's important that you go to sleep. You lie down at a specific time right. and train your body. So if you have insomnia, you don't want the television on when you're going to sleep. You don't want to read something that's very stimulating to the brain when you're going to sleep. You don't want to have a big argument before you go to sleep. You want to dedicate yourself to sleep. So we can start with simple things as I'm going to sleep. I'm going to have a warm shower. I'm going to spray some lavender on my pillow. Or I'm going to put some lavender oil on my third eye and relax a little bit. And I'm going to lie down. You can have a cup of chamomile tea. If you buy store-bought chamomile tea, you know I tell you to take two tea bags for one cup just to be a little more therapeutic and you have your chamomile tea and you lie down. What else can be done? You can practice meditation and deep breathing in the evenings. You have to center yourself and really bring it down. You do have to bring that time down. You can't go from boom to boom. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to have that, that cycle and train your body. Yoga for sleep is very good as well. Um, Exercise. Now here's the thing about exercise. Some people respond well to exercise and get to sleep better. Some people exercise excites them and they stay awake. Yes. I personally, again, can sleep on a walk so I can exercise now and sleep in an hour. So I am very blessed and highly favored. So it really is about understanding your body and how it feels. Because the exercise may release that stress and tension and allow you to relax, right? Um, what else can you do, JD? Lemon balm tea, lavender tea. Um, we can use, no, I'm not going to ginger. Today is not the ginger day. It's not the stimulation it's not. day. Okay. No, it's not. So lemon balm, lavender, chamomile, albizia. Um, we have different herbs we can use. Um, and then we can do formulas. So I do formulas, for example, for really? sleep. Um, depending Because again, according to Chinese medicine, your sleep may be dependent on different meridians being out of balance. But then, JD, I am a Western doctor. So if you do the holistic aspect, the eating right, the exercise, get, you know, stress coping, meditation, yes. and you're still having a difficulty and it's an acute situation, you've had a, an unexpected death of a loved one. You know, um, mm. I had a friend who lost her husband totally unexpectedly and I called her, I said, I have the herbs for you, but I can give you a prescription, right? So that is to tell you, because sometimes in a very acute and shocking situation, you may need to have medication. You understand? Mm-hmm. And, and so, but your body, you have to feel your body. So these are the, the benzodiazepine fam- family. So that's the valium, the lorazepam, diazepam family. Um, those are the sedatives that we would use in Western medicine. Now, if you have chronic insomnia, then we go on to other medication. But we really try not to keep you on that medication for long periods of time because you can become addicted and then you can't come off. And so your body is attached to that to go to sleep. And sometimes it may not even work because it's reached a threshold and you cannot fall asleep. Exactly. Yeah. So this yeah. is why... Um, JD, I also use acupuncture. Right. Okay. So acupuncture helps a lot for sleeping. And you know, JD, I rarely try to, while we're promoting optimum health, 
Yes. I really try to promote all that I do. Of course. You know, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. But I have to today, tonight, remind everyone that for something like insomnia, I definitely start with a holistic aspect and an approach. I start with training your body, bringing it down, having that lavender candle, having the, the yeah. humidifier, the lavender yes, oil, which I use, yeah. the chamomile, bringing it down, speaking to yourself, the yoga, the meditation, getting the herbs, doing the acupuncture. Yes. Acupuncture is not going to be like bomb bomb, but it's going to support the body so you can regain that control and balance for your shen to rest. And, and your shen will not rest if your meridians are not balanced. But I understand totally what you're saying. We appreciate the Western medicine and it is there for use. But if you're speaking about insomnia and one of the things you just said, it's about the mind, it's about, you know, the body. It is, so something's happening there. Too many things are happening up in here. So we've got to find a way to bring it down in here. before we and, even Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes people have anxiety or they have yeah, yeah, yeah. active um, attention deficit disorder, for example, ADHD or ADD. And they, their mind is just racing all the time and they can't shut the mind down. So when you can't shut the mind down, so then we can use other techniques to bring you down, to center you, to balance the body so that you can have effective sleep. Is it ever too late? And I say that and I think about our friend uh, Natasha Jones, because I remember when we were doing the Ebony show, that's one of the most consistent questions she would ask because it's a valid question. Is it ever too late to make the change because I hear you speak about you can become very dependent on the Western medicine. Um, and I, and I, I don't, no. sorry, I say this thinking about two particular persons right now in mind. I think they are at that point where they are very dependent on the medicine to go to sleep. Is it too late for them and persons like that to try and adopt the holistic I don't side? Think it, yeah, I don't think it's too late, but they have to be ready, like an addict, you have to be ready to understand right. that it's set. And so you have to understand that it's going to take time and you have to understand that it's not all just going to change in two weeks because it's been years in the making. So it's never too late. I mean, JD, even a smoker, we tell a smoker, it's never too late to stop smoking. Right. It's never too late. It's, it's never too late. I mean, the last thing you lose is hope, right? Everybody who knows me and knows what I'm thinking about at this particular time in, in, in 2020, it's never too yeah. late to lose hope. The yeah. last thing you lose is hope. So I would never say it's too late. I would right. always say that there is always an opportunity to make change. So JD, you know, it's like, um, I say to most of my patients who have insomnia that I'm treating, you know, if you never had a night of good sleep and mm. you get two to three nights of good sleep, mm -hmm. let's say thank you. Yeah. If you change from waking up at two o'clock and now you wake up at five, That's we're good. doing good. Yeah. If you're waking up instead of three times a night, you're waking up twice or once, we're doing good. So it's about looking at your glass half full and moving on and working on it. It's never too late. You I, know? Like that. Um, I like that. Five, it's never too late. Can you just touch on one thing? Because I'm hearing persons in my head, not to my headset, conversations that I've had before, I mean. Where, it might be a little late. <laughs> where they say <laughs> by the way this sorry, is sorry. the live checkup that stuff does something blah, blah she always does this crazy thing this is the live checkup and that's why i love her i've been doing this for almost two years right so she pokes fun at me sometimes i'm hearing only her in my ear through the headset on zoom but i'm i'm remembering some persons a particular person says to me that they have to have a little drink so they seem to depend on alcohol. On, Can you speak to Yeah. You know, then we're going to a different conversation. <laughs> so the conversation is where I have to ask the cage questionnaire. You know, do you feel a need to cut down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it an eye opener? You because, know, this is because you through the day. Do you get annoyed when people tell you about your drinking? Um, no, actually, the person who doesn't, and I'm, I know he's watching right now, so good evening to you, sir. But he says... Always he says that, Jay, I, I need to have this drink because it calms me. And I, I try to understand this calming because he, he, well, he's he does trained not sleep. His body. He's, he's trained his body to that. Yeah. So and he does have can, insomnia, by the way. Huh? 
Yeah. Right. So we can then begin to substitute the alcohol for something better because chronic alcohol yeah. in the night can't be good for you. He needs it a might cure you. It yeah. might cure you in another way, but it's not the, the right curing. It might cure a different way. I'm glad you um, said that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely would say that that is not an option, JD. Now, let's, let's get this straight. I, anybody who knows me knows that I believe that life is short. Yes. Um, and, and, and there's about balance. So I can go home stressed one night and I will have a tips of Baileys or some other drink. I like my drink sweet. There you know something about me. Um, but it's not going to be more than once a week. You know? Right. Um, Good balance. I, I generally, if I feel stressed out, I mean, and you know, okay, so I told you no ginger, but I lied. Oh my gosh, I lied. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. Yes, I'm <laughs> glad. I use, Telling I, use my, I use my golden milk. I use All right, my golden yeah. milk. Yes, my golden milk. I definitely love my golden milk for calming me as well. Um, Just remind us how to make that now. Just remind us. Oh my gosh, now. All right, yeah. So the golden milk, what I do is I grate one finger of ginger. Right, right now, I'm lying if I tell you I measure it because I just go with my gut. I'm but really, one right? finger of ginger with about half a finger of turmeric and I grate them and I, put mm. it, I bring it to a boil in about half a liter of water, simmer it, and then I leave it, I simmer it for about half an hour. And then what I do is that I put warm milk in that. Right. So, but the other way to do golden milk is to boil it. And then after you get that, you can throw, strain it and then throw the milk in there and warm the milk up with it. So there are different ways to do golden milk, but I like to boil mine in water. Just because if anybody grew up on a cow farm or knows about boiling milk, you know that milk is rice and skull. You remember when yes, you skull and milk? Yes. Right. So I like to do my boiling in water and add my milk after. And I sometimes add cinnamon to it. And honey, you have to add some honey to golden milk. <laughs> I think I'm going to make this golden milk one day. And how often should we take that? As you were speaking on. Well, golden milk, you have one cup a night. One cup a night. Um, you know, I was going to tell you I'll make you a cup, but I probably won't see you. Yeah, I know. No, I'll make a cup. I'll make a cup for you and show you how to do it. And then no, I was it. about you to say, can, can we, can I was going to say, can we do a private Zoom lesson? I'll be in the kitchen and you just show me if I'm putting too much or too little here or there and we can do that. But then again, you go to bed by you eight. Know what I, you know, you need to behave and stop talking my business out. It's there, okay? No, it's surprising <laughs> you're up this hour right now answering questions, so. Let's be real. I am retraining my body. Nice, so. nice, nice. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, honestly, I, I do um, like golden milk. Um, I don't use it all the time. I, I mean, I don't need that much comic to be honest. I'm very tired and drained, so yeah. I would sleep. But some nights, you know, you, you'll take a little drink of that. All right. You know? Well, we, no, I'll go I, to put warm milk and brandy for the babies, but don't yeah, I, I would, yeah. I would Especially if they want that. to. Especially if they want to go out later, you know, they try those things. Yeah, but you know, those parents who want to run out. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I would that. not know about parents like that. I'm highly responsible. Very exactly. I know. I'm not. Con- I'm not in any way approving that. I just know I've heard those stories before in the past, Is and I don't have any kids. No, not my mother. Not my mother. No, not Miss <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she was always hands on. So we're getting ready to wrap it up because um, I, I think I've really shared uh, and in fact gotten a lot of the questions out of it. But is there anything that I may not have touched on pertaining to insomnia that you need us to pay attention to, or, or, or being like you know? I think it's just important to always remember that if you are having insomnia, acute or chronic, to go and visit your family physician, your doctor. Right so that they can work you up, do a proper checkup to make sure there's no underlying cause for the insomnia. Once there's no underlying cause, and we know that it's purely mental and at the level of the brain, the central nervous system, that makes it um, more clear cut in what we're dealing with. Because mm-hmm. sometimes there's an underlying cause that we can treat and you won't have the insomnia. For ladies with menopause, I say don't despair. Things like the golden milk, your diet, your exercise, the yoga, will be very helpful to you and yes. also balancing of the hormones using herbal formulas as well, which are of your good Victoria Clinic as well. But anyways, okay, so. um, um, but acupuncture, acupuncture is very, 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 very um, helpful okay. when it comes and effective when it comes to insomnia, resting, balancing the body, very effective. And, and I think be, be a friend with your doctor 
and understand your body, know your body, don't give up on your body and don't don't settle. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Aim for optimum when it comes to your health. And I I be, I, I don't want to beg. I plead or implore mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. And, and try to empower you to, to not accept and settle when it comes to your health. Don't take it for granted. Don't don't throw your hands up in the air. What can I do? Small small changes are very very impactful on your lifestyle these days. So I do want to say thank you very much as always, Dr. Santi LeBlanc, for uh, sharing the information inside of the live checkup. I thank you even more. You know that for just really agreeing to do this with me. It's been a year and three I, I thank you for, for bringing me out to, to, to nice. you know, figuring out how to do this. I don't think I can <laughs> talk to myself all the time. You know? <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's life. By the way, as you say that, do you have, you know, direct person stay your website, not web your website, yes, as well as your page, because I see so you my extremely website active. Is, my website is in progress. It's a work in oh, progress. Okay. I welcome, uh, but it's, it's there. So it's in its beta version, the testing version. So right. we're working on the mobile and everything. Um, but it's www.victoria-clinic.net. Mm-hmm. And you, I would love if you subscribe to the newsletter from the webpage, okay. because eventually you'll be receiving newsletters and different mm-hmm. things from me. Posh. Telling you different tips and so forth. Not posh, just trying to help. And um, I'm kidding. we're on Facebook, <laughs> Victoria Clinic on Facebook and Victoria Clinic on the score Trinidad on Instagram. And um, our website is there, Facebook is there, yeah. and WhatsApp, 741-7515 with the country code of Trinidad. Eight, six, eight. You had to think about Guyana yeah. for a second, then. I know you're thinking. I thought I was in Guyana. I miss my Guyanese. Hello, Guyana. <laughs> I know for a but second you were thinking about Guyana. I, I am a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Trini uh, um, resident. What's the area code for Guyana, by the way? Five nine two. Five nine two. Just in case I ever see you call me from five nine two, I'll know. Hey, five nine two. I'll hide. I'll hide the ID. <laughs> but no, um, Trini. <laughs> Um, we're really trying. Um, everything is, is, is being rolled out. Um, Great. I'm going to try to keep up with tips. I just trying to figure out what people want to hear about and what can I, you see, I talk too much. So it's like, what could I say for 30 minutes? 30 yeah. seconds. Like, what do I talk about? So, um, but yeah, so it's, it's been, um, we're working on it and, and, and JD, I mean, I don't want us to stop. I think this has been, this is a great platform for us to debunk and, Yes, it takes a little bit out of us, but I think we, we, we can do it. I, I don't have a problem with it. So. Thank you very much for that. I know it is after eight and a Thursday technology. We're doing it that way. But the doc really has to go because she's got patients on the outside there as we record today. You get me? Yes. All right. So <laughs> thank you as always. Be blessed to those of you that are looking on wherever you are. This is the Julian Gibbs channel on YouTube. This is why I have the video here inside of the live checkup. But you can certainly take this link and share it with your friends all over the place. And most importantly, yes. subscribe. Come on. You know, we're doing things, and, um, we're getting very we need creative. We to do our voiceovers. Say it again, please. I needed to do my voiceover. <laughs> I'll try and come in this week, actually. No, not this week. In the, I'll come in next week, God next willing. Next week. No yes. problem. Thank yeah? you. Yeah. So thank you so much. All the best. And we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>